While GDP per capita is a standardized measure of output, it's not without its flaws. The point of the measure is to help evaluate the size of an economy in terms akin to sharing a pie to party, meaning that if more people come to the party and the pie, our economy, doesn't get proportionally bigger, then any one person will get a smaller slice than would have been the case had fewer people arrived, or had the pie grown as fast as the party size. That's useful for ensuring that you can compare the size of two economies while controlling for population size differences. But per capita GDP is less useful for comparing economies over time if you're trying to evaluate more than just the speed of growth. First, to be sure, while developed nations tend to have smaller population growth rates, there's little evidence that population growth rates are linearly related to growth rates in the size of an economy per person. Makes sense since capital is an important part of economic growth and every nation isn't uniformly capital rich, meaning that changes in population wouldn't fully explain changes in per capita GDP. And for developed nations, their lower birth rates may be the result of their higher per capita incomes. After all, having children is a commitment of resources, including time. And theoretically, a person's time is valued by their opportunity costs. What's the next best thing they could be doing with their time? A higher earning individual has a higher opportunity cost for having a child. And while some may claw back some of this lost time by hiring a babysitter, for example, there's a part of the income ladder where the marginal benefit of a babysitter doesn't outweigh the marginal cost. And benefits of child rearing don't outweigh the opportunity cost of lost income. This means that to some extent, we should expect higher per capita incomes to slow down population growth rates. That direction of causality is important. Higher incomes are likely reducing population growth, not the other way around. If so, then we should expect per capita GDP each year to be muddled with the effects of changes in per capita income, but also changes in the size of the population in reaction to changes in per capita income. But there's another layer to consider when we look at developing nations, because those nations are likely going to improve their health and education infrastructure as per capita income grows, both because a great way to improve incomes is to provide effective education and healthcare, making those attractive areas to invest grant and aid money, but also because of the loop of higher incomes providing more tax revenue to invest into crowding in projects like better schools and hospitals. As those systems improve, the economy will likely see less deaths per person, meaning that, at least temporarily, there's a period during which developing economies may be accompanied by growing populations and a declining per capita real GDP as a result. Economists call this demographic transition. As an economy develops, the society within it adapts, and biologically, by living longer. Amazing that changes in populations could be the byproduct of economic development, and that is exactly why measures of per capita output may be ineffective at evaluating poverty internationally. The fact, though, that a nation that experiences development will, in the long run, experience lower population growth is why the economist Thomas Robert Malthus is considered by most contemporary economists to have been wrong in his bleak 1798 prediction that exponential population growth would lead to apocalyptic food shortages to come in the future. But did Malthus completely miss the mark, or are there reasons to believe we've found temporary hacks around his trap? Find out next.